The jury in the Potter's Bar rail crash inquest has been to see where the accident happened. Seven people died and more than 70 were injured in the crash in May of 2002. The train, which was heading to Kings Lynn, derailed while travelling at high speed. Martin Stew has this report. The jurors arrived at Potter's Bar station at lunchtime to see for themselves where the crash happened. Led by Assistant Deputy Coroner Judge Michael Findlay-Baker, the 11, who we can't identify for legal reasons, were guided around the station. If you look in the north direction, you can see where the front three coaches ended up. The jurors were taken to this platform to see the point of the tracks where the train derailed eight years ago. Travelling at 97 miles an hour, it twisted 90 degrees and slid, becoming wedged underneath that roof. Seven people were killed, a further 76 injured. Potter's Bar Station sits on the East Coast Main Line. Every 15 minutes or so, trains pass through here at over 100 miles an hour. The group was shown the now rebuilt bridge, the 1245 from King's Cross to King's Lynn, struck in 2002 before mounting the platform. Yesterday, they were told by health and safety experts that parts of the track were cracked and poorly maintained. Today, as they paused by the memorial plaque, the reality that seven people died here was hit home. In the next six weeks, it will be the jury's task to determine whether that was a tragic accident or seven unlawful deaths. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Potter's Bar. A judge has ruled that the former leader of Essex County Council will stand trial in a criminal court accused of fiddling with his expenses. Lord Hanningfield, who's 69, will stand trial alongside three former Labour MPs, all accused of theft by false accounting. Mr Justice Saunders decided they were not protected by parliamentary privilege. Essex police today put what they call a ring of steel around Colchester in a massive operation targeting law-breaking drivers. More than 40 officers were covering every road in and out of the town, ensuring no rule-breaking went unnoticed. Tom Barton joined them. A factory car park off the Ipswich Road in Colchester today became a temporary police station. Officers from the Essex force pulling over drivers for every possible infringement from suspected drugs crimes to not wearing a seat belt. There's an unmarked police vehicle up there. You went past it, you weren't wearing your seat belt. Do you any reason for that? The driver and his passenger were each handed £60 fines. More than 100 similar tickets were handed out to drivers today for failing to wear a seat belt or using a mobile phone while driving. It was all part of a massive operation with police monitoring every road in and out of Colchester. This is a huge operation and a huge investment uh, by Essex Police. Uh, in this operation. Uh, working with our partners, uh, today is about putting up a ring of steel uh, around Colchester um, on every access route into Colchester. Uh, the idea is uh, that everyone sees police today. And while this was primarily what police call a high visibility operation, unmarked cars like the one driven by Mike Bignall also have a role to play. This one is equipped with number plate recognition equipment, which checks each plate seen by the cameras against national police databases. Although education plays an important role in driving down accidents, for Mike, heavy fines have delivered the strongest message. Instead of just your, your 30s and your £60 fines with, with points, we can actually issue fines now. Um, each fine can be up to £300, so each vehicle could have several fines attributed to it which uh, obviously becomes quite costly. Five arrests were made as part of today's operation, both for driving offences and other crimes, including one for the unlawful possession of a firearm. Police say establishing this ring of steel was a success. Tom Barton, Anglia News, Colchester. National Express train companies, National Express East Anglia and C2C are offering serving members and veterans of the three armed forces free train tickets in support of Armed Forces Week. Members of the Royal Anglian Regiment were at Liverpool Street Station to celebrate the event, which starts next weekend. 1,500 complimentary tickets will be available to servicemen who are travelling to one of the celebrations. The Royal Anglians have established close links with National Express. One of the rail company's locomotives carries the regiment's name and crest. RAF planes from Norfolk are preparing to take part in a fly-past over London tomorrow. The Tornado aircraft from RAF Marham near Kings Lynn will be taking part in the Queen's birthday celebrations. A total of 30 aircraft are due to join the formation, which will begin to form up over the North Sea off the South World Coast.
I'm going to be uh, one of the Jets on the um, on the uh, on the wing of a Nimrod. Uh, so we're we're going to be a, a three ship uh, in formation uh, over London. Well, the, lots, lots of aeroplanes at different speeds. You've got uh, large, heavy aircraft. You've got classic aircraft, and of course the Red Arrows are in there as well. Um, so it does take a lot of planning and a lot of coordination in order to get everything uh, everything looking good. Some of the world's best motocross riders will be heading to Norfolk this weekend. They're heading to Ling near Durham for the latest round of the British Motocross Championship. This is the sort of action spectators can expect to see on Sunday with riders from South Africa, the United States and Russia included in the field. They'll be competing in the 125 and 250cc classes.